is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. It is a Storm Team 6 alert day, heavy rain and storms depending on where you live, moving in as we approach the 4th of July. Good evening, I'm Rafael Sanchez and welcome to the News at 7. We've had some rain already today and there's more to come over the holiday weekend. Let's check in right now with Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory. Kevin? And Rafael, all about location today. Those areas south of Interstate 70 still with the heaviest rainfall. You're less likely to see rain north of Interstate 70. 78, that's our current rain-cooled temperature. The air is very moist, humidity sky high. There are your thunderstorms, kind of a, a large area of heavy rainfall south of a Sullivan to Bloomington line. You notice from Montgomery County back to the west, dotting the landscape with some additional downpours. Let's talk for a second about this area from Bloomfield southwest into Knox County, northeast of Vincennes. There is a flash flood warning in effect for Clay, and then you get into Green and Monroe counties, that until 9 o'clock. Estimated 2 to 3 inches of rain has fallen already, with rain continuing, although it's starting to drift more to the south. In central Shelby County, flash flood warning there till 7.15, just the next few minutes as the heaviest rain has ended. There's your rain cool there, 69 in Bloomington, while it's 89 right now in Lafayette. We'll look forward to 4th of July fireworks and the weekend forecast coming up. Now in the news, an Indianapolis man says out of control grass and shrubs, they're causing a safety issue. As you can see, the overgrowth is blocking the view for drivers trying to get on 16th Street. He's called the city numerous times with no results. Eastside resident RJ Smith called RTV6's Cameron Riddle to get things moving. It's an annual problem for R.J. Smith. The overgrown shrubs blocking a line of sight along 16th Street on the city's east side. Smith has lived in his home on the corner of Coolidge and 16th for more than 20 years. He says for most of that time, he's maintained the shrubs that grow beyond his property line when the city doesn't. But as he ages, it is getting harder for him to maintain property city crews are supposed to be clearing. At the top of Smith's fears are the people who have to walk down the street with no sign walk to use. He says this stretch of road is an accident waiting to happen. Some of the cars are, are pretty low and so you don't see them in the weeds so you have to pull out very slow. I can't believe somebody's not gotten hurt. We send pictures to the Indianapolis Department of Public Works asking the city what could be done to make this intersection safer. Smith is hoping the city arrives before tragedy does. In Indianapolis, Cameron Riddle, RTV6. Cameron Riddle seeking solutions. We did send those pictures, as Cameron mentioned, of the intersection to the Department of Public Works. We asked what could be done to make it easier to see at that intersection. We'll let you know when the, we learn what the city plans to do in this case. New at 7, an Indianapolis judge has handed down a 55-year prison sentence to a woman convicted of murder. In June, jurors found that Brian Wilson, guilt, Brianna Wilson, guilty in the April 2017 shooting death of Maurice Martinez. He was shot three times outside Wilson's apartment on the city's southeast side. Prosecutors said the shooting occurred after Martinez discovered his money was missing while visiting Wilson at her home. Wilson claimed self-defense, but an autopsy showed that Martinez was shot in the back. Indigo announcing delays and in progress involving its expanded bus lines. Officials say the red line should be open in two months, but two other lines are not exactly on the fast track. Indigo says work on the purple and blue lines are delayed. The purple line will connect downtown Indianapolis to the city of Lawrence. Instead of being ready to next year, it is now set to operate in 2021. The blue line set to run along Washington Street to the east side to the airport is on hold until 2023. That's two years behind its original schedule. The new timeline with the purple line will give us a year to learn about the red line. And some of that is even driver education. So what does it mean when you have bus only lanes? What does it mean when you have a station in the middle of the road? Even how to use the rapid transit as a city. As for that red line, it will run from the north to the south side of Indianapolis with more than 30 dedicated passenger stations. Indigo says the route will open September the 1st. The agency says the red line is the nation's first battery electric bus rapid transit system. Traffic troubles are ahead and you may want to change your way to work or home later this month. INDOT will close parts of I-65 and I-70 on the south side to finish some road work that was delayed, as you know, because of all the rains we saw in May. 
May and in June. Starting July the 12th at 9 p.m., all lanes will be closed on I-65 southbound from the south split to I-465. And that closure will last nine days and all lanes will reopen on Monday, July the 22nd by 6 a.m. INDOT will then close all lanes of I-70 eastbound and westbound from I-465 to the south split on July the 26th at 9 p.m. The closure will also last for nine days and all lanes will reopen on Monday, August the 5th by 6 a.m. While people are enjoying the 4th in downtown Indy, tomorrow police will be on the job making sure that you stay safe. Metro Police deploy extra officers downtown for security during the fireworks. They're working closely with state police and federal law enforcement as well. You also play a vital role in this effort of safety. Remember, if you see something suspicious, say something to law enforcement. Some more reminders, if you're coming downtown tomorrow, make sure you're aware of all of the street closures around the downtown area and have a plan of where you're going to park. Also, when you're downtown, don't leave your bags or coolers unattended. And please remember, you cannot stop on the interstates to watch the fireworks display. You could be ticketed. This could also be hazardous to you and other drivers on the road. And if you choose to purchase your own fireworks, remember these rules. You must be 18 or older to buy any type of firework. You can set them off on your property or the property of someone who gives you permission or a place designated by your local government. If you're lighting them off fireworks, be safe. Uh, don't mix alcohol with fireworks. Have it a bucket of, have a bucket of water close by. Uh, in case something gets out of hand, you can put the, the water on it. Or when you have small children and you're using sparklers, you can put the spent sparkler wires in that water. The fire marshal also encourages parents with very small children to buy glow sticks for them instead. They may not make the noise that they want, but the bright lights should be enough to dazzle those youngsters. As for when you should can and when you can light those fireworks, be considerate. Legally, you have until two hours after sunset tonight. Tomorrow on the 4th, you can set off fireworks from 9 a.m. until midnight. And then on July the 5th through the 9th, the hours are 5 p.m. until two hours after sunset. New details tonight at 7 about President Trump's 4th of July event on the National Mall. The president is calling it the show of a lifetime. He's scheduled to speak at the Lincoln Memorial alongside marching bands and military demonstrations. We're going to have planes going overhead. We're going to have some tanks stationed outside. Those 60-ton tanks were brought in by rail from Fort Stewart, Georgia, and moved into position today. The Washington Post says the National Park Service is diverting nearly $2.5 million in entrance and recreation fees to cover the event. That money was initially intended to improve parks across the country. While the administration is ta not talking about the price tag for the event, the Park Service and the Department of Interior have confirmed it will be more expensive than in other years due to the extra security for the president. In our Democracy 2020 coverage, South Bend Mayor and Democratic presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg says he has a national service plan to unify the country. Buttigieg will announce that plan tonight in Iowa. He wants to increase service opportunities to $250,000 a year and to quadruple the number of service opportunities to 1 million high school graduates by the year 2026. The programs will specifically target students in high school, community colleges, vocational schools, and historically black colleges and universities. Next, on the News at 7, the planes remain grounded, but why is Boeing offering 100 Hundred million dollars. The company claims there are no strings attached. Kevin? And the rain is torrential near Brownstown. Then you go to north of Bedford to the west, just south of Sullivan and Bloomfield. We'll talk about additional thunderstorms, your 4th of July forecast, and what happens over the weekend. Coming up. It's work weekdays from 6 to 10 a.m. This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Indiana State Senator and Indianapolis mayoral candidate Jim Merritt is again taking aim at the incumbent mayor Joe Hogsett over housing issues. At a press conference this morning, Merritt criticized Hogsett for claiming some Indianapolis houses 
are transformed when they still need a lot of work. City officials have said there isn't much they can do about slumlords because state law ties their hands. But Merritt said this isn't true, and the city has the tools, he says, to get the job done. They have the right, if they have a reason to believe somebody has a problem inside, they could go inside. State law allows communities to uh, enter, and if, if there is a problem with the house and they were having problems, they have the nuisance law as well. The mayor of Indianapolis has all the tools. In response, Hogsett's campaign responded, saying that Merritt, as a senator in the Indiana legislature, supported laws that created barriers to fair housing in the state. Sentencing day for the former Navy SEAL accused of killing an ISIS prisoner while found not guilty of that charge, he was convicted on a lesser count. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez reports. Navy SEAL platoon leader Edward Gallagher walking out of this Southern California court today a free man. After a dramatic 10-day trial, Gallagher was acquitted of murder and attempted murder charges from a 2017 tour in Iraq. Uh, thank God. Found guilty of just right. one count for posing for a photo with a corpse. It was a regret, regretful decision uh, to pose in the photos. It's something that, yeah, obviously if he could take that back, he would. The 19-year combat veteran sentenced today to four months of confinement. But with seven months already served, he is now going home. President Trump, who intervened earlier this year to have Gallagher move to less restrictive pretrial confinement, tweeting congratulations, saying, glad I could help. And we very much appreciate the president bringing attention to this case. Chief Gallagher was accused of war crimes, including murdering a teenage ISIS fighter seen wounded in this video from Iraqi television. Fellow SEAL Corey Scott, who was granted immunity, was expected to testify that he saw Gallagher stab the teen. But in a stunning twist nearly two weeks ago, Scott testified that he, not Gallagher, killed the prisoner. I felt vindicated for my husband. I felt that this is finally the moment that we've been waiting for, that the truth came out. Gallagher's defense team argued the case was built on fabricated claims by disgruntled younger SEALs trying to get rid of their chief. And Gallagher has now been demoted. His attorneys say they plan to fight his sentence, adding Gallagher now plans to retire from the Navy. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. Aircraft maker Boeing is paying $100 million to the families and the communities of the 346 people killed aboard its 737 MAX jets. The money is going to local not-for-profits to distribute the funds to the victims' families. The Boeing MAX jets have been grounded worldwide since March. Investigators believe a problem with the plane's software system is to blame for crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia. The company says families that accept money will not have to give up their rights to pursue other legal action. The big fireworks show in downtown Indy will be something to see, but check this out. This light display apparently has been going on for decades in space. These are new pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope. The source of the spectacle is 7,500 light years from Earth in a double star system called Eta Carnene. In the 1840s, this double star went through what's called the Great Eruption that made it the second brightest star visible in the sky. It was so bright that it was used sometimes as a navigational star for ships in the southern seas. Kevin, that's quite a light up in space. Yeah, it's lightning that's put on the show in central Indiana today, shifting to the south this evening. I'll give you a look at the radar. Nothing happening east, north of Interstate 70. You get out toward Interstate 74 in Montgomery County, then toward uh, Crawfordsville and uh, Williamsport, Covington, and Vetersburg. And I'll show you, you see the heaviest rainfall to the south and west as far as any additional or continuing flash flood warnings, all of green County now until 10:15 as a result of heavy rain shifting to the south into Green County. There are no thunderstorm warnings. Radar estimates of rainfall you can see in Southern Clay almost three inches. Portions of Green County over three and a half inches. Seymour to uh, Shelbyville anywhere from an inch and a half to over two inches of rain. These build up last about 45 minutes, then collapse. But in that period of time, easily can produce an inch of rain. New Mark to Ladoga. This is just to the southeast of Crawfordsville, blossoming area of heavy rain there, just south of Wayne Town and north of Waveland in the western portion of Montgomery County. You can see that heavier downpour. 
Uh, there's Rockville right at the bottom of your screen, northwest of that Vermilion County, Newport to Montezuma, and then north toward Kingman along 41, heavy rainfall. This is more widespread. Southwest of Brownstown, then toward uh, eventually in Knox County, Vincennes, that heaviest rain is shifting south, but Bedford, you're about ready to have an all-out downpour here for a little bit. Temperatures, depending on whether you've had some sunshine, have been warmer. Lafayette, 89, with a heat index of 94. It's 72 for the actual temperature temperature in Columbus and only 69 in Bloomington. This evening, the overall coverage of thunderstorms will continue to diminish, may not totally disappear. Temperatures pretty consistently uncomfortable the next several days. Humidity remains high. We'll have a daily chance for thunderstorms in the afternoon, 4th of July, 40% chance they're more likely Friday and Saturday before we see some improvement. Let's talk about your fireworks tomorrow night. Chance for thunderstorms about 30%. Most of us will have the show go off without much issue. Temperature, though, at 10 o'clock will still be around 80. These are the expected high temperatures tomorrow. Any time in the afternoon, if you have outdoor plans, may well get interrupted as a result of developing thunderstorms just like we had today. Seven-day plan are thunderstorms around Friday and Saturday. As we move toward the weekend or out of the weekend into next week, chance for thunderstorms diminishes, and so will the temperature. And the humidity drops as well, especially Sunday and Monday. Next in hiring Hoosiers, Kevin, the push to get kids interested in the jobs of the present as well of the future. One group's effort to build the critical pipeline between the classroom and the career. Next at 7. 77. Hiring Hoosiers, RTV6's way of bridging the jobs gap and connecting you to jobs, resources, training, and education. Today's story is proof you're never too young to learn about the workforce. Our Meredith Barrick went to Junior Achievement BizTown to learn more about what they're teaching kids as young as kindergarten, many, many life skills. I want to be a doctor. 12-year-old Rachel Hamilton has some lofty goals and the confidence some adults even lack. I don't think it's very overwhelming. She's gotten a taste. So I work in Steak and Shake. Of what life in the workforce is really like. And I've learned how to do like business checks and pay loans and things like that. Rachel is a camper at Junior Achievement's BizTown this summer. We have kids from ages 9 to 12 and they come here and they um, also run a business. They have a job for the day. Every day they have a new job within their business. So they get to learn about different responsibilities. And they create a business plan. They create inventions. They have patents. Um, all sorts of really amazing opportunities. The goal is for these kids to be confident in financial literacy, work readiness, entrepreneurship, and philanthropy. It's so critical for students of all ages to be exposed to careers and pathways and life skills, those soft skills that are so needed for them to be successful. So we, we want to prepare them early so when they're able to um, become on that path after high school, whatever that is, that they're successful in life. And it says it's proven that kids who are exposed to these experiences are more prepared and successful in the future. I think we see that students are not coming out of high school with those skills and, and employers are having a hard time finding the right hire. And the earlier they can teach those skills while having fun, the better. It's important to be on time. Um, it's important to be respectful. Those those small things that are kind of those life skills that aren't being taught every day are really are the most important part of maintaining a job. And so I think it's incredibly important that we teach that as early as kindergarten. That was Meredith Barrick reporting. A lot of fun out there at BizTown. If this camp sounds like something your child would be interested in, there are two more sessions taking place in Indianapolis this summer. The first is July the 15th to the 19th. The second, July the 22nd, all the way to the 26th. JA BizTown also offers scholarships so all kids are able to attend what is a definitely a very fun camp. We put all of this information on our website, HiringHoosiers.com. And join us tomorrow morning for Good Morning Indiana as we sit down with our career coach to talk about how to make sure that you, you are the one picked for that job. Still ahead, a tight labor market calls for taking some extreme measures. The company hoping tonight's recruitment effort will help them find people interested in many open jobs. As we take a live look downtown, a little cloudy out there, some hit and miss showers. Kevin's forecast coming up with the news at 7 
continues. To make a difference. A unique way to find workers, Kelly Services is recruiting people who turn out for tonight's fireworks display in Columbus in Bartholomew County. The staffing company is looking to fill manufacturing and office clerical jobs. They ask people who are interested to share their contact information. This will run tonight until 10.30 p.m. at the Columbus Municipal Airport. Kevin? A few fireworks spots tonight will dodge some downpours. Let me show you up toward Crawfordsville, just to the southeast and west. There's some heavy downpours and then most numerous to the south, Seymour, over to around Bloomfield. Have a good evening. We'll see you tonight at 11. Good night.